the states, worked by native Indians as virtual slaves. Centuries later, the end result was a rigidly stratified society made up of a white oligarchy, a Spanish-speaking mestizo middle class, and an Indian peasantry. This pattern repeated itself throughout most of Latin America and still exists in many countries there in modified form today. In 1952, a revolution in Bolivia did much to modify this historic system. But it is difficult to completely change a class system that has endured for so long. The following case study explores social stratification in two adjacent rural communities, a Bolivian backwater where the tide of revolution has not totally swept away the old pattern, and where class inequities can be seen in their most graphic form. Esto lo alquilamos una vez que yo me retorné de la ciudad de La Paz. Lo he adquirido en compañía de mi señora Asunta Segada. Compramos, es compra marital. Lo propio la casa. La casa de sobre la plaza, igualmente. Las fotos que tenemos en estas bajadas, igualmente. Hice una plantación de eucaliptos, más de 7000 eucaliptos, que dentro de un momentito vamos a bajar, les voy a indicar. Estos hombres que trabajan acá son amistades míos, que yo les pago el jornal, por día. Jornal. Jornal de 4 pesos, 5 pesos. Entonces ellos no lo trabajan, que se les da el fiambre, la coca, el desayuno, el té, porque también se agotan, sí. También un poco de alcohol. Pero no se dedica, no quieren. Lo que quieren es que se van a La Paz, quieren estar de cargadores, y eso es lo que les perjudica, más que todo el trago. Viene una fiesta como esta, el 30 de agosto, 12 días están hasta que se agota el último centavo ya. Sí. <risa> High in the Bolivian Andes is the market town of Ayata, home of the Mestizos. They rule this land by virtue of their social rank in a highly stratified and rigid class system. Not far away is Bitokota, a village of indigenous Aymara-speaking Indians. Two worlds, but interdependent, bound together in an economic and religious framework. Indians of Vitacota, the campesinos, farm their own land, but also work as laborers and sharecroppers for mestizos.
painfully obvious during fiestas. The arrival of the Spanish conquistadores in the 16th century imposed Catholicism on the ancient religious beliefs of the Aymara. <laughs> In the colonial period, the belief systems merged, producing a kind of folk Catholicism. Today, the Aymara must pay mestizos to perform the Latin rituals. The ancient Aymara worshipped a god named Viracocha, who left and promised to return. When the Spanish conquistadores arrived, they were venerated by the Aymara as the new Viracocha. Their god returned. Aymara teenagers attend secondary school. They too feel the burden of a rigid class structure. Ya corta estos alimentos porque los campesinos o realmente los hermanos campesinos eh, no tienen dinero, son pobres y no pueden pagar los pasajes. 
Por ejemplo, allí eh, para recoger hay que pagar eh, de los envases, el pasaje cuesta, de un quintal eh, se, de 100 libras se paga 10 pesos, por lo tanto, eh, los hermanos campesinos no pueden eh, realmente eh, eh, erogar ese gasto. And even in the primary school classroom, education, the usual path of upward social mobility, is severely hampered by a lack of facilities and materials, and by persistent cultural barriers. Los alimentos, bueno, los alimentos que importan están asociados en cuatro grupos. En el, a ver, ¿quién puede decirme en, en Aymara? A ver. ¿Cómo es? Forced to abandon their own native language in school, Aymara children must learn to communicate in the dominant Spanish language if they are to survive outside their village and improve their position something few will manage to do. Unable to read and write Spanish, Aymara men are at a distinct disadvantage in the marketplace. Very often disputes arise over what Aymara owe mestizos. Here a new landlord claims he is owed a share of the harvest. <laughs> The unhappy bargain is sealed with a drink. In the faces of Aymara children can be seen the mark of centuries of poverty, insensitivity and indifference. The heritage of this and many of the other rigidly stratified societies which once served the needs of Spanish colonialism throughout Latin America. The virtual absence of modern health care, punctuated only by an occasional encounter with a mestizo doctor, is another aspect of this system of inequality. Tuberculosis, el primero. Parasitosis. 
ese llanto de dolor, por mi patria ser un héroe en el campo de honor. Bueno, ahora vamos a rescatar al alumno. Cada alumno, entiendan, cada alumno viene a la escuela lavado. Se van a lavar, se van a cambiar, ¿entiendes? Sí. Y además, como está bien la chica, ¿entiendes? Se van a cambiar, se van a lavar, se van a hacer. ¡Ahora están vendados el sindicato! ¡Sinturo Bandrero no falta de nada! ¡Mamá, mamá, 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 mamá! Some say that only a major social revolution can heal the bodies of such underprivileged children. In 1952, Bolivia had a revolution regarded as one of Latin America's most successful. Some progress has been made. Land reform has been introduced and some social barriers have been lowered a bit. Dedicated teachers are trying to make such changes a reality. <laughs> This is the first time that Vitacota peasant children have been visited by mestizo children from Ayata. But even though progress has been made, this Flag Day ceremony still resonates with class distinction. <laughs> It is still abundantly clear that privilege and access to wealth in this society come from being born into the proper ethnic group. Mestizo children have greater access to and a greater share of the status, prestige and economic resources provided by society. Hemos subido con el corazón hendido, hendido de placer, hendido de cariño para respetar a los emblema nacional y también respetarla en compañía de todos ustedes. Y en nombre de, de mis alumnos, en nombre de la maestra, me ayuden a decir, ¡Viva Bolivia! ¡Viva! ¡Viva el emblema nacional! ¡Viva! ¡Viva el 18 de agosto! ¡Viva! ¡Viva la comunidad de la Vistocota! ¡Viva! ¡Viva el núcleo escolar campesino de Bancanipampa! ¡Viva! ¡Viva la escuela fiscal mixta de Mesa de Benavente! ¡Viva! ¡Viva! No, no, no. ¡Viva el de la Voto! ¡Viva la provincia de Muñecas! ¡Viva el pueblo de Ata! ¡Viva la comunidad de Vistocota! The formalities continue on this day of national celebration, but an undercurrent of unrest boils to the surface, expressed this day by Ayata's town barber. Molero Jerequina, Copachava, La Paz, Luis Izquierda, Traposo, Luis Izquierda, San Nacapraz. Eso es el caso de Canto, Copachá, con Jamás, Nadia de los Santos Nieros. Mucho tiempo, a la Vistina Cat, Antorchat, libre y camisa teja, va a palomitaja. Suma de Sirkir, San Nacapraz, un camado humano que San Nacapraz, San Nacapraz, San Nacapraz. Un campista, tu cayatawa, hermano Nacapraz. Aplausos, aplausos.
Nacional Bolivia. Sí. Viva el día de la bandera. Sí. Bolivia's revolution of 1952 failed to provide full equality, but it profoundly challenged the nation's historic class structure. This system, which once supported and made possible a vast colonial empire throughout Latin America, is now at odds with the new goals of modernization, economic development, independence, and nationhood. Even in the rural backwaters of Ayata and Vitacota, the uneasy alliance between mestizos and Indians, which had existed for centuries, is beginning to crumble. Measured against the goals of the revolution, it appears archaic, dysfunctional, Discontent with the old system of social stratification, a system which has resulted in such glaring inequities, is growing. Por mi patria ser un héroe en el campo de honor.